This is effectively the last play in this game. Kirk Cousins is going to check it down to TJ Hawkinson, way short of the sticks, effectively forfeiting the game. Remember that it's 4th and 8, so the line of scrimmage is going to be about here, and the first down marker is going to be about here. I'm going to draw out what the route progressions look like for you, just so you can understand what's going to happen here. You're going to get Adam Thielen running like kind of a deep, lazy corner over here. Justin Jefferson's going to run basically a streak. Dalvin Cook is going to block and then release as a safety valve to the left. TJ Hawkinson's going to run kind of a, a deep flat to the right. And then the key component is going to be right here, KJ Osborne, number 17. He's going to run a bend over route. The idea of this play is obviously number one, are we going to get Justin Jefferson one-on-one? -on -one? If so, give him a shot. Problem is, this is what the defense is going to look like here. Now, pre-snap, you can tell you've got a single high safety and then some form of a robber safety here, right? He's walked down, but he's not quite in the box. What are they, what are they going to do with him? Well, this is what's eventually going to happen. Because this is the coverage, Jefferson is basically not an option, right? He's doubled. Thielen's going to get a one-on-one, -on -one, but he's not really a burner type. The reason that Hawkinson's going to run underneath is because there is a chance, of course, when you line up to play this, that the Giants come out and just run super prevent defense, like dropping everybody 10 yards downfield, and you can get some easy yards after the catch, super easy first down. If that's going to be the case, the other routes don't matter. If that's not the case, the other routes are advantageous, right? You've got those two streaks I already talked about, and then K.J. Osborne's bend route becomes extremely useful. A bend route is where basically you just run to the defender, and then wherever you meet him, you start to tail off and run towards the center of the field. It's kind of like an in, but way sloppier. So theoretically, if he was being pressed, this is what it would look like for K.J. Osborne. Or, in off coverage, it'll be a little deeper like this. Now let's run the film and see how it develops. So right off the snap, Dexter Lawrence gets a push, and eventually he's going to be right on Kirk Cousins' ass. Kirk eventually decides to throw to Hawkinson here, and obviously that was the wrong decision because the sticks are here. Let's rewind just a little bit and I'll tell you exactly where and to whom Kirk should be throwing. So right here, Kirk has a clean pocket, and he's about to hit the top of his drop. You can see that the short defender, so the defender with less of a gap, actually ends up taking Thielen, which makes his streak advantageous, and maybe you should look to throw it there. Additionally, you can see that there's a lot of cushion and outside leverage by this outside corner on K.J. Osborne, which means... He's got the middle of the field. Now, there is a safety, I think it is, lurking, waiting, hoping. But there's plenty of room, a good 20 yards in between him and where K.J. Osborne is. Plenty of room to fit a ball in. Right here, this is about where Kirk should be looking to throw to K.J. Osborne. Now, the defender is broken down, which means he's stopped. He's not moving. K.J. Osborne's about to make his cut to the inside. You need to see this, anticipate, and loft the ball here over the head of this defender so he can't run backwards and to the side at the same time, not very well at least, but inside so that K.J. Osborne is the one with a better chance at making a play on the ball than the defender. Now, if he throws the ball where this X is right now, notice, now, okay, I hate when people do this, just because the ball's in the air, other defenders will stop covering, and that makes other people look more open. But you'll see right here, K.J. Osborne still does have inside leverage, and he's gaining more and more separation by the millisecond. If this were to have been thrown when I said earlier to where I said earlier, look at how much separation K.J. Osborne has, and look at how easy of a catch that would be. Only five yards past the sticks, not an unreasonable throw whatsoever. That's why Kirk Cousins failed. Now, if you want, you could right here throw to Thielen, but it's a tougher throw, it's very deep, and Thielen's not a deep threat, right? That's not his game, right? Like right here, he's got a step. 
and that's plenty. And Kirk Cousins still has plenty of time in the pocket, and it's not that deep of a throw. It'd be 25 yards. Jefferson's not an option. Honestly, Dalvin Cook's not a bad option out of the backfield, too. He's got one dude to beat and plenty of sideline to get there. Really, the only things Kirk can't do are throw this up to Jefferson and check it down to Hawkinson. If you like analysis like this, if you thought this was fun, check out my YouTube channel. Same as my Twitter handle. Or go to YouTube and search PBFG. Do it. Don't do it. I don't mind. Either way, I'll be grinding film. Asta.